The cardiovascular system, man, what does it do? It pumps blood around the body for me and you. The heart pumps the blood, the vessels carry it around. It circulates all around the body, up and down. It delivers oxygen to all the muscles. It moves nutrients fast, so you gotta hustle. It removes waste and carbon dioxide. Without the cardiovascular system, man, you would die. There are three layers of the heart. The epicardium is where it all starts. The outside layer, the visceral pericardium, the outside layer, and that's the blood. Huh? Next, you got the myocardium, myosin muscle. The middle layer is made of cardiac muscle. And then you got the endocardium, the inner layer. It has the endothelium. We'll talk more about it later. The heart is a pump. It works all the time. The pacemaker pumps as its prime. The left and right act as separate pumps. They go back and forth like thump, thump. You got the tratriums, man. To relieve the pressure We got valves that allow blood to flow in only one direction If the blood tries to flow black, then there is a rejection The bicuspid and tricuspid are the AV valves They're between the artery and the ventricles They show up like a crowd Next is semi-linear between the ventricles and arteries They hold back the blood They are lunar and watery We have systemic and pulmonary burst circulations Blood flows from opposite sides They don't need a vacation The biggest artery, the biggest transporter Is right next to the heart It's called the aorta Order. The arteries leave the heart and the veins bring it back, but if they get clogged, you get a heart attack. Next up we have the coronary circulation problem. Blood in the heart chambers doesn't nourish the myocardium. The heart chamber has its own system, takes the problem down. Here we go now, let's just break it down. Coronary arteries supply the heart muscle with oxygenated blood. Cardiac veins drain it so there's not a flood. The coronary sinus is a large vein. It receives blood from the cardiac veins. Some special tissue man sets the pace. The SA node sets it. It's not a race. You got the AV node and the bundle of hiss. The pulses move across the heart like this. It passes through the branches of the intravancular septum, through the projungi fibers, and onto the rest of them. There are some heart conditions that are not so good, but sometimes they can just be misunderstood. Tachycardia is rapid. It's where we start. It's dangerous. You don't want to redline your heart. Bradycardia. That's when it's less than 60. Your heart is flat and I mean just like the C. You got the cytosol contraction and the diastole relaxation. Each is the action of the heart's traction. Blood pressure is measured in millimeters of mercury. Now can you remember all of that, homie? The most important system, heart and such. Without the cardiovascular system, man, we'd be out of luck. Well, that is it and we are drawing to an end. But if you want to study, feel free to watch it again. Stop for a blood announcement. Superior and inferior vena cavae dump blood into the right atrium. From the right atrium, blood travels through the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle. From the right ventricle, blood leaves the heart as it goes through the pulmonary semilunar valve into the pulmonary trunk. Pulmonary trunk splits into the right and left arteries that go to the lungs. <laughs> Oxygen is picked up and carbon dioxide is dropped off by blood into the lungs. Oxygen-rich blood returns to the heart through the pul four pulmonary valves. Blood enters the left atrium and travels through the bicuspid valve into the left ventricle. From the left ventricle, blood leaves the heart via the aortic valve and the aorta. Those, friends, are the eight steps from the blood flow to the heart. And that, my friends, is the eight steps of the blood flow through the heart. All right, now children, I'm going to teach you about some heart problems that people can have. They're very dangerous. So, inflammation of the pericardium, which is called pericarditis, often results in a decrease in the serous fluid. This can cause the pericardial layers to bind and stick to each other, forming painful adhesions that interfere with heart movements. That is not a good thing. When the heart beats at a very rapid rate, so like when I was jogging really fast, the myocardium may receive an inadequate blood supply because the relaxation period, this is when the blood is able to flow to the heart tissue, are shortened. So, situations in which the myocardium is deprived of oxygen often results in crushing chest pain, oh, cause, which is called angenia pectoris. This pain is a warning that should never be ignored, so go to a doctor and have this. Because of the angenia is prolonged, the oxygen-deprived heart cells may die. 
which can form an infarct. Then the resulting myocardial infarction is commonly called a heart attack, which is what a lot of people die.